y'all, it's Maddie from the Itty Bitty Homestead Committee. We have some Farrah Fawcett hair going on because I'm trying heatless curls and don't know what the heck I'm doing. And today, we are going to discuss something I find to be super interesting. And that is, how do I decide which rabbits I don't want in my program so early before they have matured out? So let's hop into it. So as some of you may or may not know, I start evaluating my rabbits from the time they are in the nest box clear up to the point that we get rid of them. And what I look for is different at each stage of life. An example of me knowing right in the nest box who I don't want to keep in the program is this little caster doe right here. And you can be saying, Madison, it's in the nesting box. The baby is that big. How do you know you're not going to keep it even after you grow it out? And I give to you this adorable little baby. Take a good look at her. What do you see? Go ahead and comment down below before I say it. Take a guess if you've been here for a while. She has no nose mark. Or she has the tiniest little dot right here, but I don't really consider that to be a nose mark. But if you look at this little baby, she doesn't have a nose marking, no butterfly, no anything. So right off the bat, this rabbit would be a disqualification on the show table. And I myself know that in my lines, if I breed that little no nose marking, it is going to perpetuate through my lines. So if I see a baby in the nest box that doesn't have the proper facial markings, even when it's just skin on them, I know automatically that they are not going to stay in my program. Now, I have seen it to where if I've had a tricolor and they have those orange markings come in, I might change my mind by the time they hit two weeks because those orange markings come in on the pink. But if it's something like a broken caster or a broken black, you can see from the time they are born if they are going to have the proper nose markings. And that automatically in my program is a cull. Whether that cull be hard or soft depends on the purpose of that rabbit. But either way, it's not going to stay in my program. Another example of things that I don't really like right off the bat that I will cull for in a program are little rabbits like this. Go ahead and take a good look at her. She's a cute little baby, she's fat, but I knew pretty quickly I wouldn't be keeping her in my program. Both of her parents are broken rabbits. With that being said, and both of them being broken, the likelihood of this being a Charlie is very high. I don't have the space nor the time to keep a potential Charlie to test breed it to see if it is just a true Charlie or marked as a Charlie. And then also this little baby doesn't have a nose marking and she has very poor markings around her eyes. She's also a tricolor and she has one black dot here and a couple of black dots on her ears and that's it. And that pattern isn't balanced enough for me to keep. So straight off the bat, I have things in my barn and protocol that I don't want to keep. And that's not for every breeder. There are breeders who have more space or they're a little more lenient with their program and they have the time, capabilities, and resources to deal with those problems in their lines. Unfortunately, when it comes to stuff like that, I do not. But that is stuff that straight away, right off the bat, I can tell you, okay, these guys are either going to the freezer or going to another breeding program. Um, for instance, if I had somebody who was breeding broken casters who really liked that rabbit without a nose marking and was like, hey, I really need to work on shorter shoulders and I need to work on high points and your rabbit has that I want that rabbit, I could definitely talk to another breeder and it can go to their program to better it. But it's not going to better mine, so I'm not going to keep it. Now, if we get away from color markings and very easy things to pick up, there are other things that I look at and worry about within my line. And these are things that used to take me longer to pick out, but now as I've been getting to know my lines, as I've been doing this for longer, I can start picking out what I don't like sooner. And again, this is what I don't like. This isn't necessarily what I'm keeping and waiting to mature out. These are things that are just obvious that I know aren't going to fix themselves with age. And and that is specific types. And I'll give you an example of this. So this is a nine week old chinchilla Rex that is out of my most recent litter. And I know right off the bat that I don't want to keep her. And she's only nine weeks old, so she doesn't have her matured weight in, she doesn't have her matured shape in. So why would I kick this out of my keepers program already? She was the runt of the litter. I don't want to perpetuate the runt of a litter 
into my lines. Um, especially when you compare her to her siblings, who are double to triple her size at the same age. I want the biggest, fastest growing out rabbits first. Um, and, you know, I've noticed with my runts, they do not get as big, as fast as their siblings. And even when given the chance to grow out, a lot of times their siblings will hit the six pound mark and these guys will barely be hitting five if they ever hit five. Also, when I pose her up and I look at her, her depth is horrendous. Um, there is absolutely no saving it as she gets larger. She's very flat along this top line and she has a very long shoulder. Now, you could say the depth could improve with age. You could say that her shoulder can fill in more, giving her like less of a lanky shoulder, but something that won't change is this top line. If you do not have a certain amount of height along this top line, when they are eight, nine weeks old, that is never going to change because that is based solely on bone structure. So all the problems with this little girl and that she has, I don't want to perpetuate that in my lines. Now let's compare the last baby to this baby. Same age, exact same litter. This is one of the two that I am looking at keeping in those chinchilla lines. And if you look, she is much bigger than her sister. If we flip her on her side, we get her all posed up, nice and easy breezy here. We look, she has that high point that we are missing with her sister. We have a much shorter shoulder. And if you look, even though she has the thinness along here that you see in a junior, her hips are more wide, meaning that she's going to fill out more along this back end and high point to make her much larger and bigger than her sister. Um, she's also not a runt, so she is growing out wonderfully. She is big, she is huge, and her type is just all over better. So I don't want to keep seven chinchilla rexes out of a litter. So what I do is I slowly start breaking down the best and the worst of the litter. The worst of the litter goes to the butcher barn. The best of the litter, I will continue to grow out. Now, after I give these examples, I always have someone say, well, why wouldn't you keep them just in case? Maybe you're wrong. And unfortunately, when it comes to things I definitely don't want to keep, I'm not wrong. And we're moving past the color option, right? We're talking when it comes to type. When I look at my runs, when I look at my smallest babies, when I look at hip ratios compared to height ratios, when I look to a flat top line at eight weeks, those things most of the time only get worse and perpetuate themselves at worse as the rabbit gets older. And this includes shoulders. And if any of y'all raise rabbits, you know shoulders is one of the hardest things to fix. My Rex will get to five pounds between 12 and 16 weeks. Um, meaning if I were to butcher them out at 12 weeks and I decide who I want to keep at 16, 20, 24, on and on and on up until I breed a rabbit, I could potentially be feeding six extra rabbits instead of one or two. And in the long run, that is a huge difference in your feed bill if you're being consistent with that with every single litter that you raise within one, two, three, five, ten, twenty 10, 20 years. One of the things that you will learn as you grow with your rabbits is understanding how your lines work and how they continue to grow through their ages. At first, you might feel more comfortable in keeping every single kit out of a litter in case you have made a mistake. But as you continue working with your lines and understanding how they grow, you'll be able to pull out rabbits sooner and sooner and sooner until you are able to look at an eight week old rabbit and have a really great idea on whether or not you're going to want to keep them as a breeder or a show prospect. And my methods aren't perfect for my lines either. Um, normally at eight weeks, I define the oh heck no's or oh heck yeses. And most of the time with my oh heck yeses, the ones that have the nice depth, they have the nice shoulder, they have the nice loin, may not rise to my expectations as they get older. For example, I highly doubt that both the chinchilla rexes, both the broken here over here and the solid right here, would rise to my occasion of being the best. Already at nine weeks old, I am looking more at keeping the solid chinchilla compared to the broken chinchilla. 
And that is because even though that broken chinchilla has a better grow out, that solid chinchilla has a better type. But it's so close that I will wait on these two to decide who's going to be the best. Because when we get nitpicky is when it starts to matter about maturity. When we start really looking at a rabbit and trying to decide whether it should stay or not in a program, that is when we start looking and trying to see if they're filling out the way we want them to, if they're as large as we want them to be, if they have more problems than just color or is very small or has very obvious body type issues. In summary, it's very easy to pick out the bad things very quick, but it does take time and growing out to find the best of the best. Which is why if you are buying from a breeder that you don't know very well, wait to buy until 12, 16, 20 weeks for your show rabbit and your breeders too, to be honest. Cause at the end of the day, it's best to wait to see if those things fill in properly. And if you have a nice looking rabbit, just in case something is wrong, that is just slightly off as they get older. But that's kind of the method to my madness. So thank you all so much for getting this far into the video. I really appreciate you. We just hit 1000 subscribers. I am working on a 1000 subscriber like extravaganza celebration kind of thing. So please be patient with me. I am so grateful that I have all of y'all and that y'all follow me and that we have the ability to talk. The past year has been absolutely outstanding. So thank you. But anyways, I'll see y'all in the next one. Bye.